M0FXB, welcome back to my videos on the USDX, USDR budget transceivers. So we've got a range here. I've had quite a few people say to me, well, which one do I go for? There's so many on the market, which is true. And there are also software modifications and call signs that you're probably familiar with are DL2MAN and PE1NNZ. So all of these pretty much tick in the same way, these USDX, USDR one ones this is actually this one in my hand here is more like the Zygu x6 200 100 the reason i've even included it is because it's small and compact so the dl2 man my one has had the battery modification stroke addition i have got the speaker plugged in which i'll unplug now and they do generally either come with bnc connectors or an adapter which is sma to bnc which is what i'm using now and uh, it works it works great it's you do need an external an external speaker and these devices it, they tend to as you press you can change bands and same goes for I'll tell you about the other ones in a minute like so and then you turn the knob this one if you hold down the this button here and this is the original T true usdx by dl2 man and it works very well they're portable now you i have connected these to my micro pa50 amp and atu 100m tuner uh, and it worked that it works very well let me just show you what that looks like so this is what they look like not expensive about 100 pound for the top one and the, the pa50 is about 120 but i think they're a good in, investment and the atu 100 has a built-in battery, but you do have to power the the amplifier. Very easy to connect though and works well. In the background, you can see the USDR with the red corners. Virtually identical, if you ask me, to the one they call the white buttons, which is the same without the red corners. Very similar in how it works. There is modified firmware. You can upgrade the original firmware. If we turn it off and on, you get the firmware name R1. I think that was O2W. Yes, O2W, which a lot seem to have. And this one here, let's turn it off and on. Exactly the same. Price-wise, we'll, we'll go through that as well. Now, the firmware that I recommend is by GWARDI, and I'll put the GitHub link for that. But the downside to changing the firmware on these kind of devices, this one here, is you have to dismantle them. You have to connect into to the, the interface. So you can then run the software to upload. So it's up to you. And there's a Facebook group called USDR, USDX, which I'll link in the description that you can have a look at as well. So all I've got is a 49 to 1 ballon here with a long wire. I'll just quickly tune here. I'm not expecting to hear anything. Press. If you press and turn, you'll get the volume. Now, it's a bit of a rubbish speaker, but that is intended, to be honest. They, they expect you to use an external speaker with these these devices. I actually use a Bluetooth module like this. I know the focus is rubbish. A little speaker, you plug it into the speaker output, Bluetooth it, you've got a speaker, or you can buy yourself an amplified speaker which tend to have batteries in them, and just plug that in. So there's always a way of getting good audio. So if we just quickly tune up and see if we can hear anything. We're in LSB there. Sounds a bit of a mess, doesn't it? Not sure what that is. It's quiet at the moment, but you go into the menu on these devices. You've got volume, mode, filter bandwidth, press and turn to make changes band look or you can double press tune rate vfo mode receive increment tuning agc noise reduction s meter you can choose what it's going to be and swr meter and so on so they get the idea and you've got a small ptt there and enter button as well and you just back out menu then back out so let's just look at one of the other ones 
This is a new budget one that is out and it costs only costs actually about 80 pound. The the original one that you're seeing here was about 130. I really like the case. Now uh, it it is a clone, you know. They are taking other people's firmware and making money from it. Now when the conditions are good, it it works well. And these are these aren't just receivers. These are transceivers. 5 watt, 10 watt. I mean, test it out. Menu there. I'm pressing mode. And it's took me into menu. Bandwidth. Once you're in, you press. There you are, you're seeing that we're in um, FTA. The connector's on the side. Okay, let's have a look at the red corners one. Quite a big device compared to the other one. Menu, and then you've got a knob on the side here. UART, mic, tune and key, and antenna BNC. On the other side, we've got to PA, speaker, charger. There is a battery in this one, and you can choose whether to turn it on or to use the battery and it is on the the battery at the moment it's a nice clear display nice and bright and it's a, it's a nice solid feeling device if we come just quickly flip through the menu you've got that big knob on the right which you can push you've got volume lsb filter exactly the same as what well virtually the same not exactly because it, it is is it it is different firmware. The DL2 MAN firmware is unique, and you have to buy the original to get his firmware. There's the call sign there, which you can change by the looks of it. PA bias, all these things you need to learn about. So that's your red corners one, and again you've got that GA DA GWA RDA RDI <laughs> bespoke firmware that you can use on that. So let's have a look at, lastly at the FX4CR, which is actually a completely different device, but it's small and compact. And this is a 20 watt transceiver. I think it's 3.5 all the way up to 54 megahertz. But you know, don't quote me on that. Let's get an antenna on there as well. Like I said, it's a 49 to one balance, 66 foot length of wire, about 10 foot up. So it definitely does not compare to the other ones. It's a, like I keep saying, it's a completely di different device. But you know, it's a HF six meter pocket radio. You can use it for POTA, SOTA, all those kind of things. You've got a menu there and it is sort of touchscreen menu. It looks, they look like buttons, but they're actually not. You press and hold and get a long menu there and you can go down through just by tapping and back out with the F button. About £400. So, you know, which one do I recommend? Well, I recommend all of them because they're as good as the antenna setup you've got, the firmware you're going to use within these devices. The, the, a lot of work has been put into this device by B... I always get the call sign wrong. BG2FX. Uh, I got mine from AliExpress. This one has the USB-C on the side where the, the older models didn't. They did have an output, but it was TRS, USB-C, uh, a round DC input, and also a little fan there. So this is the sort of newer, they call it the third generation. Now, if someone said to me, what, do I, what should I just start with? Um, well, yeah, it makes sense to start with spending a low amount of money. The one that you know is tried and tested is the sort of DL2MAN-PE1 devices. And go, go on to that Facebook page. You'll get to meet Rob himself and lots and lots of help and videos and tutorials. And just Google, I'll put the links in, but just Google USDX 
GitHub and you'll get the, the different people that have made firmware, but it's all strings from the original firmware. 